One of the things that has been on my mind a little bit is something that I was called not too long ago on social media. I don't really know how I feel about this word. I think this word is really open to interpretation, and that word is this, crazy. I don't know how you feel about that word, but for me, a couple of different thoughts come to my mind. And again, I was, I was called this in relation to a social media post that I did about Christ. So when I hear the word crazy, these are some of the things that come to mind. One, the Cameron crazies. If you're familiar with Duke basketball, the Cameron crazies. These guys are nuts. This is their uh, fan base. But in some way, shape, or form, when I think of crazy like this, I think of passion, which isn't all that bad. How about this? Seal. Seal had a hit song called Crazy, and there's a, a line in that uh, song that goes something like this, if we're ever going to survive, we need to be a little crazy. Well, crazy could be a bit of a life skill in that sense. Or how about this? One of my favorite professional quotes of all time comes from Apple founder Steve Jobs, and he says, the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. And I like that because I think now crazy has a bit of an entrepreneurial streak to it. So when I, when I get called crazy on LinkedIn for posting about my faith, to some degree, I kind of look at it as a compliment based on how these definitions of crazy can go. But that's not necessarily how the world looks at the word crazy. I think to some degree their definition of crazy could look a little bit like this image. When they say crazy, they're, they're kind of talking mad, insane, lunatic, deranged, unstable, unhinged. Their definition of crazy might be a little bit different than my definition or your definition of crazy. H have, you, have you ever heard, as, a, as an executive, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, have you ever heard somebody say something like this? You know. You're crazy for asking her out. She's never gonna say yes. You know, you're crazy for mortgaging your home to fund that business. What if it doesn't work? You know, you're crazy for chasing that dream. Maybe you should just keep your feet on the ground. You know what, you're crazy for taking that business risk. What happens if it doesn't pan out? By a show of hands, how many of you have ever heard something like that from somebody at some point? And I think just about every hand is up. Of course we've heard something like that. And part of the reason we've heard stuff like that is this world is a little bit different than us as business executives, a little bit different than us as business owners. This world looks at life through a different lens. I think this world to some degree is timid, safe, passive, non-confrontational, not taking a whole lot of risk. So when we do that as business executives, when we do that as business owners, the world kind of looks at us and thinks we're a little crazy. How many of you, again by a show of hands, are successful because you did not listen to those voices? Again, just about every hand goes up. And one of the things that I learned about me, and maybe you're similar, is if you want me to do something, tell me I can't do it. Look at me and say, that cannot be done. You cannot achieve that. You cannot accomplish that. And I'm going to find a way to get it done. Maybe you can relate to that. So I've heard this a lot. Again, maybe you've heard this too. You can't start that business. Oh yeah? Watch me. You can't pursue that dream. Oh yeah? Watch me. You can't make a lot of money. You can't put your future at risk. You can't solve that problem. Oh yeah? Just watch me do it. What's amazing about that is when we're called crazy or we're told we can't, we can't from a business perspective, it just makes us want to do it more. But when we're told we're crazy or that we can't from a spiritual perspective, more often than not, it seems to hinder us. Why? Why does it light a fire under our keister from a professional situation, but it seems to stifle our growth, passion, and creativity from a faith perspective? Again, if you're anything like me, maybe you've heard this. I know I have pretty much my entire adult life. You can't bring your faith into the office. So we don't. 
You can't talk about God on social media. So we don't. You can't open a secular meeting with prayer. So we don't. You can't have a crucifix in the office. You can't put scripture in email because they're telling us we can't do that. And if we do it or if we think about doing it or if we think about think about doing it, we're called crazy. You're crazy for doing those things. You're out of your mind for doing those things. Why? Why does the world say we're crazy? Why does the world say we're out of our mind for doing those things? Well, because we might offend somebody. Because we might lose business. Because we might find ourselves on the wrong end of a lawsuit. Because we might be canceled. Because we might make our coworkers a little bit uncomfortable. It's not the greatest thing in the world to be told we're crazy by people of this world who don't really get why we do what we do and whose we are and all that stuff, but we shouldn't be overly surprised because Scripture talked about something like this. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13, Paul wrote, if we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. The thing we have to realize, and again, that's one of the things I love about an organization like C-Suite for Christ, because it forces us to think about this. It crystallizes this in our lives. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And to this world, how we act is weird. To this world, who we worship is weird. To this world, how we talk is weird. But again, even though we are in this world, we are not of this world. It's up to us to live for God, to behave for God, to talk for God. And no matter how it looks to some of these skeptics and unbelievers, we love God, we live for God, even if it makes us look a little crazy. Because yes, we might offend somebody. Yes, we might lose some business. Yes, we might have the occasional post taken down of social media. But we also might, might, might save a life. Back in my corporate career, where I spent uh, several years before I went out on my own, one of my coworkers, unbeknownst to us, was in a very unhealthy relationship. She had a fiancé who was a little unstable, suffered from some pretty severe psychoses, and she decided to break it off with him. He didn't like that too much. On a Tuesday afternoon, he threatened her life while she was at the office, and he threatened to do it at the office. She told me and she told some of her other associates, and we went on lockdown. We, we locked the doors, we followed our procedure, that was the most stressful day I've ever had professionally because, again, you, regrettably, you see these things at schools. You see these things at organizations where that violence does happen. And over the course of several hours, we were following all the procedures. Thankfully, nothing ever materialized. But one of the things that I noticed is in the hustle, in the bustle, in all that activity, I lost track of her. I didn't talk to her, follow up with her. Hey, how are you doing emotionally? Went home. Had a normal day at home, went to bed, and my cell phone rings at about 11.45 at night, wakes me up, I look, and it's her name on the caller ID. When your coworker calls you at 11.45 at night, it's usually not for a good reason. I pick up, I say hello, there's silence for eight seconds. I just assumed I got butt dialed, I was getting ready to hang up, and then I finally heard a loud sob. She wasn't speaking because she couldn't breathe. She's sobbing so hard on the phone, and after she's finally able to talk, she told, my, she told me at that time that was the worst day of her life. She's at the end of her rope. She's at rock bottom, and she was thinking of doing harm to herself. She wanted to try that God thing. But in her life, she had nobody that was a believer. She had nobody that went to church. She had nobody that had a relationship with God. But because I talked about God at the office once in a while, because I included God in an email once in a while, I was the only person she could think of in her darkest hour that had a relationship with God. She said, Paul, I want to pray, but I don't know how. So for the next 45 minutes, that's all we did. Thankfully, she's come around. She's now a member of her church. She's accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. But I wonder, what would have happened that day had I not looked crazy to the world and shared my faith at the workplace? Would, would she still be here? 
I don't know. So one of the things that I just want to put on your radar to, to kind of take from Steve Jobs, if I can take his quote a little bit and, and kind of reiterate that for C-Suite for Christ, the ones who think they're crazy enough to cover the world in Christ are the ones that usually do. Let's get a little crazy. Let's be a little crazy. Let's get this world looking at us cross-eyed because it's the crazy people that are going to change the world. Starting today, will you make a promise to join me and the rest of C-Suite for Christ in being one of those crazy Christian people?